Math with McMurdo, the YouTube channel. This is where we find out what math is all about. Subscribe, you'll love it. All right, Marty spent some amount of money on coffee every day for blank days. How much did Marty spend on coffee? So how, Waylon, how would I go about solving this? Okay. Times the amount of days she got it. Amount spent. Times <coughs> days. Mm -hmm. And that's going to equal the total. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, he Yeah, he said all that. Good thinking, though. Yeah. All right, so if he spent, let's see. $4.25 a day. And he spent $4.25 a day for 14 days. Our equation would be then the amount spent, which is $4.25 times 14, and that's going to equal the total amount spent. Now, you know what I think is easy? I'm going to multiply $4.25 times 10 first. And when I multiply something by 10, I know you've been taught you just put a zero behind it. But that's not exactly what you're doing. What you're actually doing is moving each place value so it's 10 times bigger. So instead of, um, instead of two dimes... I need two dimes to be 10 times bigger, so it's gonna be a dollar. So the dimes, it's gonna be instead of two dimes, 20 cents, it's gonna be $2. So what I'm actually doing is moving my decimal point to the left once. I moved it from here, or to the right once, sorry. I moved it from here, and then it moves over here. Same thing, like when you're doing whole numbers, if you had 35 times 10, Really what you're doing, 35, my five's in the ones place. I'm putting my decimal there and I'm making it 10 times bigger. And to do that, I gotta move my decimal point to the right one time. So 425 times 10 is $42.50. What about 425 times two? Can we do that in our head? 425 times 2? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, $8.50. <laughs> and so that's, I've already multiplied $4.25 times 12. I can multiply it by two more and get $8.50. And that's a lot easier to do than 14 times $4.25 because I can break it into pieces. All of these I did in my head. I did all of this multiplication in my head just by breaking this factor apart. It's kind of what we've been doing when we've been doing our number talks with the multiplication. We're using what we know, what we can find, to help us get the answer but make it easier in our head. Now, all of the hardest thing I have to do now is add three numbers together. So I have zero cents. You're right. If you had more than that, you would be rich. Okay, and I have five, ten, fifteen tenths. So that's five tenths and one whole. So I have eight and eight is sixteen. Plus two is eighteen. Plus one is nineteen. And then I carry the one. So now I have fifty-nine dollars and fifty cents. So he spent fifty-nine dollars and 50 cents on coffee. Questions on this? Yes. So, if you add a dec if you move the decimal, you add a zero? Well, if you have to, if I'm multiplying, let's just say I have this number here. 276 and I'm multiplying it by 10. 
What's in my ones place in this problem? Six. The six. So it's really written 276, and there's my decimal point. If I'm multiplying it by 10, I just need each place value to get 10 times greater than what it is. So instead of a six in the ones, I need this, the six to be 10 times greater. So what's six one times 10 is 60, which is six tenths. So in order to do that, I just have to move this decimal point over, then it becomes 10,760. And the six is now in the tens place instead of the ones place. And that works with decimals as well as whole numbers. I know you've been told in the past, you just put a zero at the back. That's fine, that's what you do if, it's, if you're just doing with whole numbers, but when you're doing with decimals, it matters. You can't just put a zero at the back because that's not gonna change the value. 3.2 times 10 can't be 3.20 because that doesn't change the value. And it makes we live with the right mindset. We can do anything. So keep a positive attitude, believe in yourself, work hard, and don't be afraid if you fail. Just start again. First attempt at learning.